All right, so we're gonna go over my uses kit deck profile uh, for the limited deck battles. Uh, so this is pretty much where I have been testing and getting my current ratios. So first up, I got four copies of Gang Benji. Uh, one cost blocker, your first turn. Uh, if you don't have Jewelry Bonnie, it's a very good card to put out. That way you just have that established blocker ready for you. And for the best card in the entire deck, four copies of Bonnie. So Bonnie is, in the limited format, is very good because it is one of the very few cards that can really help you dig through your deck for missing pieces. So if you don't open any of your key pieces like Basil Hawkins, X-Drake, uh, Law, Kid, you can actually use this to go search. And it's good uh, beginning game, really good beginning game, and also good late game uh, or mid game. Whichever, when you need to get a card, Tapping to just to get uh, a Bonnie search to mill five uh, is very great, um, and plus the cards that you excavate off the top go back to the bottom, go to the bottom of the deck, so you're not going to be seeing like the dead cards if you do get any. Um, next is uh, Scratchman Oppo. He is your two K counter, so you want to max out on your two K counters as much as you can. Um, never really play him; he's just in my hand for a two K counter. Uh, next, we play three of Rogue. So I like him. Uh, early game, you if you go if you go second, so you put two down, and if you don't have a jewelry bonding, you can play him out. That way, uh, after you start establishing your board, he becomes a five to six k. Uh, his he will be a six k attacker, and he'll be at five k whenever you attach it onto him on your opponent's turn. So he will be live to attack after. Uh, potentially after the following turn. And also being a 1,000 counter uh, isn't bad either. Um, I've been really liking him. Uh, I play four of the promo Eustace Kid. So early game setting him up or late game putting him out uh, to wait a turn. Uh, when you want to get some hefty damage in, you got a lot of Dawn to spare. Uh, playing him, attaching a bunch of Dawn to him, or with X-Rake on the field. Uh, when X-Rake attacks, gives everybody a thousand, so he'll be already at five thousand. Attaching two would be seven. So you're gonna make your opponent commit a lot of resources to not take the tube life. So that's why I really like him. And if the attack does land, that's two life right right off the get go. So um, you're chipping away really heavily, especially since Kid can restand himself too. So um, one of the I've been contemplating putting him to four. I'm um, just trying to try to figure out my ratios, but um, I like playing him off of uh, off the life too to be able to kill a, a rested uh, three drop or less. But uh, the really nice combo uh, early game straw swords into killer knocking out something like and against red killing a Zoro before they can even attack with it. So um, early game this card's insane. Um, and once you get towards the late game cool straw swords um, is going to rest something problematic you might not be playing this but early game that card is just insane so we and we get into the four drops and we play x drake we play four of them so x drake uh dawn times one on your turn you can uh, whenever he's suspended all your characters and your leader cards that are supernovas gain a thousand attack so Whenever he attacks uh, on attack declaration, he suspends himself, so he will give himself a thousand boost as well. So he'll be a seven thousand swing uh, whenever you attack initially with him. So with him being a seven thousand attack, he's going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent, um, which will follow up to the next couple cards um, following the next four K. But um, he sets up big heavy swings. He sets up kid for being able to swing multiple times for making your opponent lose a lot of resources from their hand, or you're making the promo kid really hefty on their on their uh, double attack swings. Uh, we play four of the Kobe because a four drop 6k, if you don't have an extra rake or you don't really have anything to play in that phase because you didn't really have anything to play, just a 6,000 beater. You can't really go wrong with it and being a thousand counter um, is just really good to have. Because if you can't play it, cool, it's a thousand counter in your hand, it's not dead. And 
and for, I believe this card is just literally insane, uh, Basil Hawkins. So I play four of it uh, because I do want to see it. Just because in certain matchups, like against Red, it punishes them heavily for overextending with their rush attackers. If they swing everybody and you can survive and you have a Basil Hawkins out, you are punishing them so heavily by attacking into them and then dropping a Trafalgar Law on top of it to go ahead and restand it and swing again. So getting a potential three swing on characters at 7,000 with one Dawn attached to it, 8,000 if you have a extra suspended, is just insane. You're clearing their board. Um, they're going to lose a lot of resources. Um... And you're probably going to end up winning that game if you can just keep clearing their board. You keep uh, applying a lot of pressure, more pressure that than red can really handle because they don't have a lot of counters. Um, they want to end the game quickly. So if you can outpace them, you're more than likely going to win. And the Trafalgar Law, of course, restands on play, restands a five cast or less character. So being able to restand him or an X Drake or a Kobe. Uh, being able to get an additional swing in just adds so much pressure. Uh, for the last character card, I only play two of the seven drop kid blockers. Uh, me personally, I only play two because I have other room. I needed room for other cards, um, as well as Bonnie being able to uh, look at the top five and search. Look at the top five search. You can get to this card so much you don't have to play it more than two. And if you play it at more than two, you're seeing it way too often, and it's clogging your hand because it doesn't have a counter cost. So, and against blue, you don't want it to be clogging your hand because there's other things that you want to be playing to counter blue because blue is the only one that can really deal with this card. Um, so, in my in my opinion, I think two is fine um, because in certain matchups in most games, you don't even get to go into this before you really are establishing your board presence and making it so your opponent really can't play the game. Uh, it's the event cards. I'm playing a lot of them. Uh, I play three of the one drop uh, Scapple. Um, it's 2,000. Restands a Dawn whenever you use it. So if you have multiple, you can just keep one Dawn open. Do 2,000. Restand a Dawn. 2,000. Restand a Dawn. So, uh, I like it for that aspect. It's just another 2K, just keeping one, uh, one open. And then I play three of the Repel, which is the 4K counter uh, for two. So if you leave one or two, you're um, even if you don't have it, you're tipping your opponent that you do. So they'll be more likely to play around that you have a big counter. So they might not actually go for a game or might not be as aggressive. Um, especially if you show this in game one, game two and three, they're going to kind of want to play around it. Um, Another 4K counter is really good, but the best event card in your deck, uh, the way that you can get rid of problematic cards is Straw Sword. So with Straw Sword, you get to rest any one of your opponent's characters. This deck has a strong problem with removing par uh, removing characters and removing problematic cards. So using Straw Sword to rest cards, and then using cards like Basil Hawkins and X Drake, so you X Drake uh, Leader Swing, so now he's at 8,000. You're dealing with most of the characters in the game. And if you have a bunch of Dawn out, you can rest the Kaido if it didn't attack um, and then swing big into it. Um, or if they have heavy blockers, Straw Swords can go ahead and rest your blockers so you don't have to worry about uh, your opponent potentially blocking you and you can be really aggressive and go for a game. Uh, so pretty much that's all I have right now. Um, please let me know what y'all think uh, down below. And um, I'm going to have the Kaido and Luffy ones up at some point as well. So, without further ado, this is my deck profile for Captain Eustace Kid, um, optimized for limited deck battles, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.